question. Um, yeah. I have a mute. Okay, so I am so clicking Kelly. go live. We should be live on YouTube I don't think I understand. <laughs> so I don't think I... Kelly understands. So Kelly, do you have the YouTube in the background that uh, you're, you're monitoring or no? Because if you're not, don't worry about anything he just said. Yep, it's oh, all good because we are actually live. Right now. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. We are live oh. on YouTube right now, just letting you all know. So I will <laughs> let you guys okay. take it over. <laughs> And go from there. Good evening, Shelton community. Um, as you can tell, we're doing some final last minute uh, technical conversation, so we apologize. <laughs> but we are so excited in presenting our second uh, evening parenting forum. Uh, my name is Brian Worsbicki, and I'm the school counselor for Bordeaux Elementary. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our other two elementary counselors. Go ahead, Robin. I'm Robin. Yeah, I'm Robin Grode. I'm the school counselor at Mountain View Elementary School. And I'm Laura Holland. I'm the school counselor over at Evergreen Elementary. Great. Um, we'd also like to welcome our uh, special guests. Uh, we have a, a presenter who's going to be talking a little bit about some uh, web links for parents to access for tonight's uh, parenting forum. Uh, Kelly Brazell from uh, the Committee for Children. We want to welcome her. Uh, this is her first time doing a parenting evening event, so we're really excited about having her added to our series. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much, Brian. We also have our two Spanish language interpreters who are going to be helping us in our second portion of the evening from seven to eight. We have Wendy Lankalis from Bordeaux Elementary. Wendy, would you like to say hello? Hello, everybody. And then uh, Lucrecia Hernandez, from uh, Evergreen Elementary, excuse me. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to pull up our agenda for tonight. Hopefully everyone can see that. Uh, tonight's presentation is entitled Social Emotional Learning and How to Help Your Child. And so one of the things that we are doing as a district in our K-12 programs is putting together activities to help our students, our staff and our parents uh, deal with what we obviously are all trying to um, maneuver and um, negotiate uh, just the numerous kinds of emotions and feelings and circumstances that we're all working through in this uh, remote learning program. And so hopefully tonight we'll be able to give you some strategies, some tips, on how to work through some of those questions with your child. We are also working on putting together in each building a rollout of services and programs to help students when they come back to the school in our hybrid model. So we know that the school board has pushed that start date back to I believe February 22nd. So this will give you an opportunity to use some of the information from tonight to talk with your student and ask any questions that you may have uh, moving forward. So we're hoping that you'll enjoy tonight's presentation. So you've met the counselors. Again, we are all available either via email or through contacting our school. And so we also have web pages on our district websites and our school website. So if you have any questions after tonight's presentation, which will be recorded, please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us and we'd be happy to um, reach out and give you any information from tonight's presentation. So what we'd like to do to start with is we'd like to show a video through the Committee for Children. Uh, Kelly was um, gracious enough to, we happen to find this video, but Kelly said that this is a video that is uh, extremely beneficial for parents and actually for our staff or for anyone that's interested in knowing a little bit more about this acronym SEL. You've been probably hearing a lot of it lately, uh, especially in our remote learning. Uh, the Committee for Children, you'll learn a little bit later on in our presentation. They are a fantastic resource and Kelly and I has, uh, we, we've uh, met and have worked together on some of the programs that we're doing in our building and she was able to share some of these resources with our other counselors 
So um, sit back and uh, we hope you enjoy the video. There's a lot of talk these days about SEL, social emotional learning, but what exactly is it? Social emotional learning is the process of learning social and emotional skills, and it's just as important as learning reading or math. This learning process is most effective when it begins early and continues through high school. Social emotional skills are essential for success in school, work, and life. With SEL, students learn to manage their own emotions and behaviors, have empathy and show care and concern for others, solve problems effectively, make responsible decisions, and maintain healthy relationships. Students learn to recognize what's happening inside them and to be aware of their emotions, which helps them deal with strong emotions and impulsive behaviors. It helps them stop, take a breath, and think about a situation before acting. Students learn to identify others' emotions and perspectives, which helps them empathize and show compassion, no matter who they are or what their background is. It's not difficult to imagine how this is important in the classroom and in life. Students learn to solve problems in peaceful ways and communicate assertively about what they need or want. This helps them get along with other students and get the help they need from adults. When students learn to make responsible decisions about their lives and their future, things can turn out better. Research shows social emotional learning makes a difference. Students who participate in SEL do better academically, have improved attitudes and behaviors, and act in delinquent or disruptive ways less often. In the United States, students with strong social emotional confidence are twice as likely to earn a college degree and nearly 50% more likely to graduate from high school and have a full-time job by age 25. Just as important, students who are socially and emotionally competent have more friends. This means they're more likely to feel connected to school and do well and less likely to be left out or bullied. Simply put, by participating in social emotional learning, students learn the skills to succeed in every facet of school and the rest of their lives. I think you'll see how important social emotional learning is in uh, a student's um, success, just like in the academic arena, those uh, areas of relationship building, um, decision making, self awareness, uh, self management are really important skills that we at the elementary level um, really try to emphasize. And in this particular case, in the remote learning, uh, is even, I think, even more important. And we have spoken with many parents during conferences and through individual meetings of how important it is to continue to reach out to those students to make those connections, even in a, in a remote environment. So one of the things that I would suggest as you watch the video again, and I would certainly encourage you to do that and watch it several times, because I think um, you can really get some good information from it, is again, understanding the kinds of conversations that you wanna have when you're talking about social emotional learning. So for example, self-management, uh, managing emotions and behaviors to achieve one's goals. You're gonna be learning a little bit um, where Robin is going to speak a little bit about the developmental stages in terms of one of those areas, which is trauma and stress, which I think we would all agree right now is something that we are all trying to manage uh, in many different ways, some successfully, and then some where, where we are still struggling. And so developmentally, you want to consider the age of your child and what you think they may or may not be able to understand, but be able to, in any age level, uh, just being able to listen and, and hear what they have to say with, with no judgment, and then trying to move forward in terms of what's your next step. How can I help them you know, process some of the feelings that they're, they're having at the moment. 
and with the, I'm sure the anticipation initially of the January 25th hybrid, uh, I'm sure they had a lot of questions and now that's been moved back. And so that's a feeling that they're gonna have to kind of process that feeling of disappointment. So self-awareness, recognizing one's emotions and values as well as one's strengths and challenges. And so self-awareness is really, a, it, it is a strength. And I think for a lot of our students and Laura and Robin, please um, uh, chime in if you'd like to, to add anything to the conversation here. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we really want to emphasize is that, that, that it's a, a strength that the more that they feel confident about themselves, the more they understand their own emotions and where it plays in the decisions that they make, just makes them more well-grounded and able to reach out and advocate for themselves or to get the, the help that they need when they need it. Um, responsible decision-making, uh, making ethical constructive choices about personal and social behavior. One of the challenges I think for our students coming back is the going from a remote to a hybrid, back to a remote, back to a hybrid, and the kind of um, challenges in terms of just what are the expectations? And our classroom teachers are gonna be working on that when the students come back to the classroom, which they of course are very skilled at. Uh, but at the same time, they're not gonna be going every day. It's going to be, uh, excuse me, they're gonna be doing some face-to-face, -face, but then they're gonna go back to that remote setting. And so they've gotta learn how to switch sort of their gears and know that sometimes the learning matrix for remote learning is gonna look different again once they're back in the classroom. So uh, that's a good conversation to start having with your child and with your classroom teacher. And I'm sure the teachers are gonna start having those conversations as we get closer to the hybrid um, rollout. And then relationship skills, uh, forming positive relationships, working in teams, dealing effectively with conflict, Right now, the big conflict, I think, for most students in the remote learning is with their siblings. Um, some of them may be you know, interfering with their learning during a, a live lesson, or they're trying to watch a asynchronous lesson. And so um, some of that conflict is gonna look different when they come back into the school setting, um, out on the playground, uh, seeing their friends again, um, and just learning how to manage all of those social nuances uh, that for, for most of us, again, before we went into remote learning, was just something that you know they were familiar with. But this again is going to be something that we're going to be practicing and doing on the playground as well. And then again, social awareness, just showing an understanding and empathy for others. I think it's important that when you talk with your child, that they understand that people are going to be at different levels of emotional awareness. Uh, their friends may not be as comfortable as they are coming back. Uh, they may be um, having lots more questions and may find themselves being much more quiet than they may have been before the remote learning. So if your friends see differences in their friends when they come back into the hybrid setting, just be aware and remind them that we're all at different levels of awareness and comfort level and, and to have some empathy and understanding so that you can help support them if they are feeling nervous uh, or excited. So I think that's real important when we talk again about all the different kinds of questions that our students are gonna have coming forward. So again, you're gonna hear that acronym SEL. I wanna assure you that um, the elementary uh, buildings are working at putting together uh, activities and sort of training modules to get our students ready uh, to come back. And it's just been a a testament to the efforts that our administrators, our principals, our teaching staff, uh, the students and, and our parents and the district as a whole. I think the community has just been very supportive. This is a trying time, I think, for everyone. So um, I'll speak for myself as the school counselor from our Bordeaux community. community. I wanna thank everyone for uh, that constant support and understanding. Can't say that it's been easy, and that there hasn't been some frustration. So if you have those, please don't be afraid to reach out to one of us or to our administrators uh, or even teachers so that we can help you. Uh, Robin or Laura, I'm gonna stop for just a moment. Do we have any questions in the chat room at all, Laura? We don't have any questions there yet. Okay. So with that said, 
I'm going to hand the next few slides over to our counselor from Mountain View, Robin Grove. Thank you, Brian. So Brian was talking about kind of these feelings of uncertainty and thinking we're going to come back and then it gets changed and that can be kind of hard um, for students, but you know, all the rest of us too, the unknown is very hard. Um, and adjusting to what remote learning has been like is very different and it causes stress. There may have been some events throughout this time that we've not had kids in school with us in the homes um, that may have been traumatic for the students. So what we wanted to share on these next couple of slides were some typical reactions you might see out of your child um, by our age levels here uh, divided up. The first slide, we're looking at typical reactions of kids that you might see ages two to five, um, feelings of helplessness and uncertainty that can extend into other aspects of their lives. And so if you look in that first box, I talked about that first reaction you might see. If you jump over to the box right next to it, um, an idea of what you could do to help with something like that is to hold, hug, cuddle, as much as you possibly can um, to help your child feel safe because at this age, that can be very helpful, making them feel secure. Um, with kids who are just learning to talk, it's hard for them to take in a lot of words from you, especially if they're under stress. So something saying something as simple as mommy is here, daddy is here, um, just to keep it short and reassuring for them. Um, you might see some disturbances in eating, sleeping, and toileting. And what you can do is try and just maintain re routines as much as possible um, and, and keeping those regular meal times and bedtimes, not making a big deal about kind of that reverting back in some of those, um, especially the toileting, um, you know, just be very patient with that. You might also see them talking repeatedly about the event, like they're really fixated on it or pretending to play. That's their way of expressing that, okay? Um, then uh, another reaction you might see is excessive clinging to you. And that's just showing that, you know, they need that secure holding and cuddling and reassurance as much as possible. Um, over there in, in our additional ideas of what you can do to help with some of these things. Um, bedtime, give extra support at bedtime. You might want to just sit there and spend extra time talking. Uh, might be something that could be helpful. And then um, something that a lot of kids enjoy doing is expressing their feelings through drawing pictures at this age. Um, next slide. Um, we have typical reactions of our a little bit older kids, six through age 11. They're also kind of concerned about, you know, what the events have been um, over, but, but the way that they look at it is safety of themselves and others in their family um, or at school. So, you know, they're, they're a little bit more concerned about uh, things like that. Their, their worlds are expanding a little bit beyond just themselves. So they'll start thinking about others that way. Um, constantly retelling of the traumatic event, you might hear them talking about that and going over those events um, quite frequently. Um, you also, though, when they get a little bit older, they might refuse to talk about it. Uh, that's a pretty normal reaction once kids get a little bit older. Uh, being overwhelmed with fear or sadness, they also might uh, have a hard time sleeping or, you know, just not have the appetite that you're used to seeing in them. And um, some of their reactions might be physical discomfort, such as stomach aches, headaches, and feeling tired. And some of the ideas, things that you could do to help is um, telling your children that those feelings are very normal and reassure them that they are safe and listen, listen a lot. And Brian did bring that up in our uh, previous slide uh, before these slides that, you know, just, just listening sometimes is, is the most helpful thing so that they can get those feelings out, especially if they're comfortable sharing. Maintaining routines, just like with the younger folks, 
um, as, as much as possible because that's something that's very reliable to them and they can count on that um, in some of these uncertain times. Limiting exposure to media coverage if you can. Um, if they see it or hear something about it, you just sit with them and talk with them about it after they have seen it. But um, there's no real reason for them to be watching the news every night necessarily um, because developmentally it's, it's really hard for them to process uh, some of that. So uh, lastly, just encourage them to see if they can think of ways to help out others, because when you're focusing on someone else, um, that can really help get your mind away from the, the stress that you're feeling. And, and it gives them purpose um, in Robin, moving forward. Yeah. Robin, I'd love to take this moment, you know, it, it just dawned on me, maybe you and Laura and I can talk a little bit about um, the questions that we sometimes get from parents is when is a typical reaction more than a typical and might be a chronic and wh when should I be um, moving to maybe um, getting some, some help either through some mental health services or through, or through maybe a counselor or my pediatrician, what would be some of those signs that we'd wanna look for? Um, and I guess what I would say is, you know, typical could look different from, from you know, ages six to 11 to two to five. So um, you know your child, um, but if you continue to see these kinds of reactions in a longer setting, you know, a week and a half, you know, or you see some typical behaviors that are, are going to the extreme, um, they're going off to their room and just pretty much shutting themselves out. Um, those are times when you wanna maybe go and, and do some probing and just ask them very simple, open-ended questions. But I know a lot of parents say, well, when, when should I be worried or when should I be concerned that maybe I need some additional help? So Robin, Laura, would you give some of your, um, from your benefit of uh, working with your, your families? Yeah, you know, what, what kind of my rule of thumb is if it's extending longer than a couple of weeks after a, a traumatic or stressful kind of event, um, that, that would be probably the time, unless you see a significant behavior um, that, that's very excessive and very worrisome. I wouldn't want to wait, but if you're seeing kind of the appetite drop off a little bit, they're saying they're having a hard time sleeping, you know, you, usually beyond a couple of weeks is when we would want to be talking about that. But I, that being said, um, if at any time you have a concern about your child, um, don't wait and ask about it, definitely. Laura, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I agree with everything that you guys are saying so far. That time frame you're looking at is this extending past, you know, what you think is normal for your child to bounce back. So um, when things have happened in the past, that can give you a clue um, to how fast your child recovers. Because like you guys said, it's different for everybody. But this, this whole situation with the pandemic and being out of school, this is a potentially traumatizing situation for kids um, because it is just kind of generally scary. Um, and if you notice your child um, is using their coping skills that usually work for them and you're teaching them some and they just keep not working, um, that might be a good time to check in with your pediatrician or um, a mental health counselor or something like that. Um, the only other thing that I would add is that if there's a safety concern, so it is not um, unusual for kids to say somewhat scary things when they're feeling overwhelmed and they're kind of at the end of their ideas for how to cope with these big feelings. Um, if they're saying something that's kind of scary or indicates that they might harm themselves or somebody else, definitely seek help right away. Thank you, Laura. I was going to mention that. that that's an excellent um, reminder to parents. And I think the other thing with this, um, because the mental health professionals, and I'm sure Kelly might speak to this a little bit when she shares the websites, um, these resources are really helpful resources that you can sit down with your um, with your family. Uh, the resources that Kelly will be sharing are resources that you can sit down with your child and talk to them, watch together. Some are, are more parent, but uh, Kelly will explain which ones you would wanna sit down with your child, uh, which, which is really important. It gives your child that 
that comfort that you are with them and that you're here to support them. Uh, my other suggestion too is there, you know, with, with the advent of, of doing a lot of Zooming, there may be a, a relative, a friend that you are familiar with, that your child is familiar with, that they might be able to reach out to. Um, sometimes, um, you, you know, our siblings don't want to talk to their parents, but they will talk to an uncle. They may talk to a family friend that you trust. And so if you have someone that they have a connection with, because that's, that's what we're all about. We're making connections and relationships. Our teachers, that's one of the things that they emphasize consistently. So look for those relationships that may have an impact to open up that, uh, that moment where you might be concerned. Uh, we do have mental health services available here in our district um, through uh, True North. So if you are interested in availing yourself to those services at some point, uh, just reach out to one of the counselors in your child's homeschool district. Okay. Um, any questions at this point, Laura, in the chat box? Nope, nothing yet. Okay. I'm going to go to the next slide. Robin, here you go. Yes. So like we had talked about, we have had a change in when we're planning to start our hybrid. And um, the, the one thing that I think is really positive about that is it gives us some time to get kids prepared for coming back to school, a little extra time on that. And like Brian had mentioned, um, our school staff in each of the buildings are working very hard on uh, what we can do ahead of time so that kids are prepared to come back. They kind of know what to expect. And there are things um, that you as a family can do at home that will also help. And this is just one example here on this slide, how to help your child adapt to wearing a mask. And um, this was something that I found uh, that I thought was really helpful. It, there are some fun things that you can do at home to kind of build up that stamina in your child of wearing a mask because it's not just going to be a quick little trip to the store wear the mask, but they are going to be expected in order for everyone to be safe at school to have that mask on for a longer period of time than many of them may be used to at this point. And so um, the first of all, starting out, um, explain why it's important. You know, this is something that protects them from getting sick, but then also protects others. You can uh, take a picture of them with their mask on. Uh, sometimes they have a, a fun time with that. Practicing, um, you, you wear your mask for a little bit of time. You're gonna build up that time. Um, you know, you can even make it fun of, hey, what are we gonna do when we keep our mask on for five minutes? So well, let's go do something fun. Uh, you could pretend also integrate map, masks into your uh, pretend play at home, get creative. You can decorate masks if you'd like to do that. For kids that maybe haven't had a whole lot of experience with masks, you can start with another piece of clothing that they're familiar with um, instead of a mask and get them used to that for a little bit and then kind of transition to a mask. And the very last one is probably one of my favorites. Stuffed animals and dolls need to wear their masks too. And so having your child wear their mask and then their special buddy could have their own mask. So um, this is on my uh, school counselor website under the COVID-19 tab. And um, there are some other good COVID resources there too. Um, this slideshow I believe is going to be available, right? To parents, is that right, Brian? Yes. And the links that we have at the bottom of these different slides, you'll be able to click on. And so you can go to um, the different links. And I think, you know, yeah. some of the terminology that, that students are going to start hearing if, if, of course, everyone's been hearing social, social distancing, they're going to hear a lot about that. Uh, they're going to learn a lot about what the screening protocols are going to be at the schools. And so those are things, as our schools begin to finalize those plans, we're going to try and get that information out to parents ahead of time so that you can start reviewing that information with your child. So they're, they're not surprised when they show up. They'll be surprised because they're coming to school uh, and they'll physically see the process, but perhaps you might be able to have some information to kind of walk them through what it's gonna be like. Um, there's nothing like being there in the moment 
but sometimes just having a little more information. Um, Robin, we still have a little bit of time before we introduce Kelly. I'm just going to click on your website yeah. and you can okay. briefly tell them what some of the things that you have on there. And I'll try to scroll sure. down. Um, yeah. Here we go. So um, right there, um, you see where the adapting to wearing a mask. To the left of that, I have a link there. Click for the uh, COVID-19, the state site in case you want to check out what the latest is there. There's a little video um, for the WHO with the minions, um, kind of a cute one to check out sometime. And then down a little bit further, if we scroll. Um, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why that's not showing up. I'm, I'm glad you pulled that up because I'll go fix that later. <laughs> but um, that that one is actually um, a gra another infographic that has different ways that we can stay healthy, like washing our hands, wearing our mask, having that six foot distance and that sort of thing. Um, and then tips for supporting uh, children during COVID. Uh, check those out. Those are some uh, good ideas too. Um, okay. I think that's probably all I've got on that one. Okay. I'm gonna stop yeah. sharing for just a minute. Get back up to my presentation. Oh, did I click? I shouldn't have clicked out of it, I don't think. Let me see. Okay. All right, I am technical glitch here. We're just gonna put it on hold for a second. I'm gonna get back into it in just a minute. My apologies. I was doing so well too with my technical expertise, but we'll get right there. We have come so far, have we not, <laughs> in technology? Yes, Brian's have. teaching me how to do things now. Yes, we have. Yes. Okay. Let's see if we can do this again. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. OK, there we go. I think we're good. Let me just. I just want to make sure I'm going to stop that for a second because I want to make sure I've got okay computer sound. Excellent. Okay. Can everyone see that? I'm going to click down to our last slide there and go to our next, which we are very, very uh, honored to have Kelly Brazil from uh, the Committee for Children. Uh, I'm going to let Kelly introduce herself, tell her a little bit about herself to our Bordeaux, uh, Mountain View, and Evergreen communities. And then she's got some exciting websites to go over with you and your, your, um, your student, and she'll explain a little bit about. And, you know, um, Kelly, we do have a little extra time, so if you want to do a little longer on each of those presentations to run the, the link a little bit, um, please, uh, you've got the, that time to do it. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much, Brian. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Brazell. I am an education account manager at the Committee for Children up here in Seattle, Washington. So just a little north of y'all. And um, I say y'all because I lived in Texas for a bit, but um, I am so blessed to work for the Committee for Children. It's a fantastic organization. And our mission here at CFC or Committee for Children is to uh, foster the safety and well-being of children through social emotional learning and development and it is just an honor to be able to speak to you about social emotional learning because um, me and the rest of my organization feel very strongly that it is a huge positive benefit in a child's life and that it's critical that every student receive the social emotional learning uh, so that they can grow up and have these strong social emotional skills to be a positive contributing human being in this world and uh, it's just wonderful that um, your schools uh, here in Shelton are uh, administering the second step and SEL curriculum and resources to help children learn those skills and to uh, grow up and make a positive impact in this world. Uh, one uh, thing that I think is really wonderful about SEL is the World Economic Forum identified the top 10 skills that help with um, uh, career workforce readiness and um, yeah, the 10 top 10 skills that um, uh, research shows uh, proved to be successful in careers for children um, graduating high school. And all 10 of them 
uh, re uh, related back to social emotional learning in some form and emotional intelligence is listed as one of those 10. Uh, so right now your children are in elementary school, but as they continue to um, uh, gain all those social emotional skills and practice them on a daily basis, they're developing lifelong skills that will help them in their career and their future as an adult. So it's wonderful that they're getting this education when they're young and they're starting um, just to develop those skills and, and positive behaviors. Uh, you know, Kelly, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I know we've mentioned this to you, but um, our K-12 program is um, revising their uh, uh, sc scope and sequence. And so we have a comprehensive K-12 program. So that social emotional component that you alluded to and, and the relationship to academic and uh, work success uh, mm -hmm. is something that we are, we are doing K-12. And so uh, I know some of the programs that you're gonna be showing help to align some of those benchmarks that we have in our program with those uh, SEL components. So uh, yeah. thank you for bringing that statistic up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing I'd love to mention, just as they were going through trauma, uh, one thing we're really focusing on as we speak with districts, we're really advocating that um, parents just are so present with their children right now and that they spend uh, just really focused quality time with their kids as a way to uh, buffer against the toxic effects of stress and trauma that uh, children and families are going through during this time. And uh, just an anecdotal story, but when I was growing up, my uh, mom was really good at practicing uh, flashcards with me. So anytime I had a test, she would go through my flashcards with me. And I always really enjoyed that. It was so special because I just got this one-on-one -on -one focused time with my mom. You know, she, um, I have a sister. So it was like, this was just my time. And my mom is also always busy on the phone, but this was just direct time. And it was so helpful for me in developing me. And uh, that quality of time just helps, um, especially through trauma, just having that safe environment with your parents. So uh, I just wanted to speak to that. I think it's really important as um, parents are um, supporting their children during this traumatic period that um, you really try to um, uh, create like a focused time with each of your children, uh, whatever that might look like. And some of these resources are ways that you can develop that one-on-one -on -one time with your kids. So I just wanted to share that and we can move on down to the next slide and I'll go through the resources. So Kelly, do you want me to run the, the, um, the, the websites from here? Or do you want to do it from your end? I'm going to pull it up on my end if that's okay. Okay. okay Perfect. So uh, what you see up on the screen, all these links will be sent to you um, as they, uh, the presentation will be available later. But we have a winter well-being, Imagine Neighborhood, Captain Compassion, Mind Yeti, and Parent Teen Connect. And I'll be sharing my screen now to go through each of those. Now, Erin, uh, do I need to stop sharing right now and let, let her share? She should be able to just uh, share it and then it should just go. So. Okay, so I don't need to stop sharing right now? Correct. Okay. So everyone can see my screen? Okay, perfect. Well, this is Mind Yeti, the first resource I'll talk about. This is wonderful. These are short, five um, minutes. Hold on, Kelly, can you see? I don't think I can see your screen. I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. Okay, Kelly, I'm gonna stop. Okay, there you go. Okay, perfect, perfect. thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Uh, so Mind Yeti are these short five minute mindfulness sessions and they are so fun, they're so calming. Uh, we as a staff here at Committee for Children, we do these uh, mindfulness sessions together. They're great for just adults or uh, for children as well. So it'd be great if you did these mindfulness sessions with your child. And um, these are great ways to be present as well because you're just very focused on listening to the video and practicing your breath and being in, um, intentional during that time. So I was gonna show you um, one of our videos. Here on our Mind Yeti page, um, we have all these uh, different resource, not resources, uh, ways to view Mind Yeti. So either YouTube, Vimeo, or if you just wanna listen to the audio, you can pull it up on iTunes, uh, but we will go over to YouTube. We have all of our Mind Yeti sessions available here. And then we are gonna play this slow uh, breathing one. And I won't play the whole thing, so I'll, I'll cut it off, but just so you can get an intro into what it uh, sounds like. Thank you. Feel free to close your eyes and just go along with it. It's so <laughs> calming and wonderful. Hello, welcome to Mind Yeti. Today you will practice a special kind of breathing. We call it slow breathing. 
because you breathe in slowly through your nose and out through your mouth. Slow breathing can help you settle the hubbub and find a peaceful place. Before we begin, take a moment to find your Yeti body. Sit comfortably with your back straight and your feet or legs resting on the floor. Feel how the floor or your chair supports you as you sit. Now notice your breath. Take a slow breath in and out. If you want, you can close your eyes. Okay, so that's Mind Yeti. Isn't that so calming and so peaceful? That might be a great uh, thing to practice too as you're getting ready for bed and just helping your cal- um, helping your child calm uh, themselves down from maybe being uh, having some high energy or some restless energy. You can turn that on on your phone and just, um, yeah, lay, um, uh, lay down as you're, or the child's laying in their bed getting ready to go to sleep. You can just play that, um, that video for them or the audio. And it's just a nice way to, to calm and, uh, and be intentional during that time. So that is Mind Yeti. The next thing we have are these winter well-being uh, videos that are for parents. We created a resource specific for parents because we know that you are uh, going through a lot of stress as well during this time. And we wanted to create a resource to help you um, focus on your self-care and your mental health and well-being. So we created this uh, video series that is all available up on our Committee for Children YouTube channel. Uh, what I have listed right here is just our blog article explaining it. So if you wanted to read through this, you're welcome to. Um, but then you can click uh, over to uh, YouTube. Kelly, just a little side note. Um, we This was a resource you sent me a couple of weeks ago that is posted on our district webpage right now. So oh. um, it, it's a fantastic series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So glad to hear that it's up on your website, Brian. Uh, so it is an eight week series. It's ending here. And I guess two more weeks, we have a new video that comes out every Monday. And so if you uh, go to our community for children, YouTube channel, you'll be able to see all of these. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, woman who works for us named Mylene Duong, and she has a PhD. And so she's the one that leads our videos. And so I'm going to play a clip for this one, which is uh, week five, setting your intentions. Just as I was talking about being intentional, we'll listen to this one. Happy New Year! Welcome to 2021 and to week five of Winter Wellbeing. Today, we're going to talk about setting intentions. The holidays are over and it's back to reality this week. Back to work or the home office. Back to school for the kids, whatever that looks like for you. But before you get too sucked into the daily grind, take this opportunity to weave in some new healthy habits. Setting intentions is backed by research, it's very easy to do, and it doesn't take much time at all. It's allowing ourselves some time, even if it's just a few seconds, to pause what we're doing and check in with our body and our minds. Here are some definitions. An intention is a guiding principle for how you want to live. It's your purpose and your aim. Setting intentions is the act of stating how you plan to live out that purpose. It's a way of gearing up your neural system so that you're mentally ready to focus, to act in a certain way, and to follow through. Setting intentions is a way to practice the social-emotional skill of self-management. And that involves regulating our emotions, our thoughts, and our behaviors in the service of our goals and values. Now is a good time to make the distinction between intentions and goals. Goals are where you want to go or your destination. Your intentions are how you want to be or act on your way to your destination. It's your guiding principle. So that's a little bit of the winter well-being. I won't spoil the whole thing. You can watch the rest of it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, By the way, all these resources I'm showing you are free. So um, they don't cost any money and they're all available for you to enjoy anytime. 
Uh, the next resource I want to talk about is Captain Compassion. He Yay. is a bullying prevention superhero. And uh, so if you just go to captaincompassion.org, you'll be able to um, access this. This is a video that explains Captain Compassion. But it is a comic strip that we create every October for Bowling Prevention Month. And um, it's so wonderful, uh, really well done, wonderful little comic strip. So you can uh, um, look through that up on this website. You can read the comic book strip as a family. Uh, and then there's all these other bullying prevention resources available up here. This is a little um, decoder wheel and activity that you can do to activate your bystander power. Um, and then here is the comic book strip. This is the most recent one that came out this past October for Bowling Prevention Month. And so you can click through and um, read each comic book strip because we have a new one that comes out each week in October. And then you can also look at the comic book strips from years past. They're all um, saved down there. And then uh, these are just, um, yeah, how to use your bystander power. And it's really important um, when it comes to bullying that if your child witnesses bullying, that they understand the, the skills and the actions they need to take as a bystander because um, interceding and being able to um, recognize when someone's being bullying and to stand up for the person that's being bullying um, is really effective in stopping bullying and, and shutting it down before it perpetuates and goes on any further. Um, so it's really important that you talk to your kids about what it means to be a bystander. Uh, and then down here, we have all these videos that you can watch uh, together. You can watch this by yourself. Um, they involve teenagers. So, um, uh, if you have like a really younger kiddo, maybe they wouldn't um, enjoy these videos as much, but these are videos that involve um, middle schoolers as they talk and process uh, through what their um, bullying experiences have looked like. So you, you know, Kelly, if I can interject right there, I've watched those three videos and, and I think they're really good, probably for our more, uh, maybe for like third, fourth, fifth, but you could certainly sit down with your child, uh, I think from that, that age group, but what I like is, is hearing it from the, the teenage student's perspective. And so I, I really like to, to emphasize that that sometimes is our biggest message, is hearing it from our students as opposed to us as the adults trying to remind them about the, the things that they can do not to, to be bullied or what to do if they see it. Yeah, absolutely. That peer-to-peer -peer connection is uh, very relatable for the student. And um, yeah, they're able to understand it better with, they can hear it from someone's voice and someone that looks similar to them. So I think it's great to, uh, yeah, these great videos are really well done and a great way to talk to your child about bullying. And then we also have a bunch of blog articles uh, related to bullying as well, available, available up on our Community for Children blog. So you can look at that too. Uh, great, so that is Captain Compassion. The next uh, resource is Imagine Neighborhood. And now this one is really fun. Uh, we have an innovation department that works for Community for Children and they created Mind Yeti and Imagine Neighborhood. They uh, create so many wonderful resources. Imagine Neighborhood is a podcast for children and families to listen to together. You can play it right off your phone on the podcast uh, app and or you can go here to our website, imagineneighborhood.org. And you can just click on listen now to watch all, or to listen to all of the episodes. There are activities that you can do as a family as well. So you can uh, click here and find all these uh, SEL related activities to do. And then just an about about um, us or about the team that created Imagine Neighborhood uh, and then contact. But uh, over if you click on listen now, I have already pulled up an episode for us to listen to a little bit. It's very fun. It's like talk radio. You're just listening to a story. Um, and so it involves different characters and they go through uh, experiences and they have to, you know, work through the experience using social emotional skills. Uh, so we will listen to the episode called The Nose Stealers. We'll get through this adventure by a nose. All on today's Imagine Neighborhood. Apocalypso here. Check out this new song I'm working on. I think I'll call it Cute Puppies Are Cute. <laughs> oh, somebody's here. 
Hold back. What the? How the? Scotty, your nose is missing. I knows, I knows. Can you help me out with something? Yeah, uh, come in, come in. What happened? Well, I was walking around the wasteland looking for a burrito. And that's when I heard it. Look out your nose. It was a nose stealer. A nose stealer? A human-sized hand that walks around on its fingers. Oh, those dastardly tricksters who say, get your nose, and then take your nose right off your face and run around with it? The very same. Right when I... So that's a little preview of Imagine Neighborhood. They're only about 20-minute episodes, and this would be a great um, thing to listen to while you're driving in the car, or maybe while you're uh, getting dinner ready, uh, just as a way to, again, incorporate SEL into the home. Uh, part of our second step curriculum, uh, which is the SEL curriculum that your schools are implementing right now, is to engage families to implement the curriculum with fidelity. It's very important that it's not just happening at the schools, but it's also happening at the home. So Imagine Neighborhood is a great resource to involve that social emotional learning component in uh, your home as well. So uh, you can go to imagineneighborhood.org to check that out. And next we have Parenting Connect. So this is a resource obviously for um, the older kids and just something to keep in mind too once your child uh, is reaching closer to their teenage years. Um, this is a resource where parents and teenagers share their views and opinions on um, topics that are just really important to uh, teenagers as they're growing and maturing. Uh, so screen time, independence, responsibility, communication. And so I was going to play uh, the video that just introduces this resource. As a teenager, I like a lot more privacy than I used to have. Like, I like people to knock on my door. There are no locked doors in this house. We have to be able to turn that knob and open the door at any time. One of the biggest questions parents have is how much independence should I allow my teenager? You want to give independence based on the amount that your child can handle it. And he's looking at me and this is common phrases. Settle down, calm down. Why are you making such a big deal out of it? I sat there, I'm like, no mom. Like, you don't know anything. The challenge for parents is to control their own emotions. Nothing works well when you're hangry, you know, hungry and, and angry. You know, now they say um, that I'm a teen, uh, I have to be a lot more mature, I have to um, I have a lot more responsibility. Responsibility to self-control, rep responsibility in academics, responsible to learn how to control your emotions. Like watch TV, uh, play on my laptop, watch Netflix. Um, it's like like a good part of my life. We love media, um, but it's powerful. So we need to know that it's also got a damaging side. I absolutely don't think she's using the appropriate amount of technology. <laughs> I can tell you that it's another one of the biggest fights we have in the house. I'm excited about this project because it's innovative and unique and it's with real parents and real teenagers with real issues, real gritty issues. All right, that is Parenting Connect. Uh, yeah, it's really wonderful to be able to hear from real parents sharing their experience uh, raising a teenager and, and working through those common issues. Uh, so that's um, something else you can check out. And, so, oh. um, Kelly, again, uh, you had mentioned that these are free to access on the website. Yes, and they are. We'll be providing, um, of course, we'll have a copy of this program, but I'll make a copy of the links that we'll also post uh, to our district websites as well. Uh, so if parents want to just access the link, they can just go and not necessarily have to wait to see the entire presentation to get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last thing I just pulled up was our Committee for Children blog, and we have a parenting section down here. So if you just click there, uh, we have a lot of different blog articles that pertain to um, to parenting and raising a child and focusing on social emotional learning. So here's one on gratitude and appreciation. 
an article on bullying. So uh, different things to uh, to read when you want to just sit down and <laughs> and read something. You can uh, come here to our Community for Children blog. And that is everything I wanted to share with you today. So Great. thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you very much, Kelly, for coming and, and sharing all these wonderful resources. Mm -hmm. As I said before, parents, these are things that we would strongly encourage you to just go and explore. And of course, with the mindset of making sure that if your child is going to view it with you, make sure that you're with your child. Don't send the child to the website. Uh, just make sure that they're, they're getting into the appropriate website. Because like the Mind Yeti is certainly something I would agree, Kelly, that probably a child, once the parent gets them linked in, they could watch a, and listen to a video. But um, obviously those links, you're, you as the parent would want to make sure that they're they're logging into the right links. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, Laura, do we have any uh, questions in the chat box? We've got about five minutes before we are to end our uh, English um, presentation. And we do not have any questions, but we do have some positive feedback okay. for you, Brian. Um, your wife's, uh, she says, yes, you have smiley face. And I think that was about your technology skills. So I just thought we'd, uh, you know, so give, you, <laughs> give you a hand for those technology skills again at this point in the presentation. Thank you. Well, it's, it is a collaborative effort and I want to give a shout out to my wife, Susie, those of you in the show community, Susie is the high school freshman Academy counselor. She is our K-12 uh, coordinator that has really energized our K-12 uh, team to do all of these exciting programs that you're seeing tonight and in the other buildings as well. So I'll give a shout out back to her. <laughs> and again, I want to thank Robin and my um, other counterpart, Laura, who have just been my technology pushers. So uh, I really appreciate all the support you give me in uh, enhancing my skills because I feel better now. You know, that social emotional skill of feeling some sense of accomplishment uh, helps me through some of these times when I feel like I'm not really doing as much as I think I should be doing. So thank you again, everyone, for coming and being part of our evening uh, presentation. We may do one more parenting forum. Uh, we were talking about it as a group um, prior to maybe our opening uh, on February 22nd. So please keep uh, a lookout on the district webpage or your uh, school's webpage. So thank you all very much for coming and um, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, so I'm going to uh, keep this running um, okay. until seven o'clock. Feel free to take a break, uh, mute yourself and I'll let you know when it is seven o'clock. Okay. Thank you. And I've got that Spanish version all set, ready to go. I think Kelly had to leave right at seven. So, oh, okay. So here's Daniela. Daniela, you, are you all set, ready to roll? All set, ready to roll. Okay. So I don't know if we had, did we have, I didn't know if we had any participants in that session I, I do see there are 10 concurrent viewers on youtube right now oh really yeah, 10 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh excellent i couldn't tell i could only see our participants so that's fantastic so i got some feedback from my principal mary johnson and she said that was excellent good yeah uh we're going to be doing an amended version of this presentation in our uh, professional development meeting tomorrow. Hmm. So I'm, I'm really interested nice. to see with the teachers. We want to, we want to have our teachers send it out as a resource for parents um, uh, moving forward. So I'm glad this was a good, this was a good trial run practice. Um, and um, yeah, so Aaron, I'll talk to you about um, getting a copy of this so that we can post it again. And um uh, get it, get it up there on the on the district website. Sure. Okay. And yes, yeah, we we are still live on YouTube. I was just. You know, oh, we are. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. And there's 45 seconds left. So. Got it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so it is coming up on six or seven o'clock. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and take away. Buena suerte. Uh, hola and good evening. Hola, buenas tardes. My name is Brian Wurzbicki. Mi nombre es Brian Wurzbicki. And I'm the elementary school counselor for Bordeaux Elementary. Y soy el consejero de la escuela Bordeaux, de la primaria, um, de la escuela primaria Bordeaux. And we would love to welcome our families for the second part of our uh, evening parenting forum. Y nos gustaría darle la bienvenida a los padres eh, en nuestras presentaciones, que es nuestro segundo foro de los, um, de los consejeros. We are so excited to have you as part of our evening presentation. Y estamos muy emocionados que sean parte eh, esta tarde de nuestra presentación. The focus for tonight. El enfoque de esta noche. Is social emotional learning. Es um, la parte socioemocional. And how to help your child. Y cómo ayudar a sus hijos. We have a wonderful set of presenters. Tenemos a nuestras maravillosas presentadoras. To help us uh, with tonight's presentation. Para que nos ayuden a nuestra presentación de esta noche. I'd like to first introduce... Me gustaría presentarles primero uh, the other two elementary counselors. a las otras dos um, consejeras de las escuelas primarias. Robin, would you like to introduce yourself? Si quiere introducir, Robin. Yes, I'm Robin Grote. I'm the school counselor at Mountain View. Sí, soy este Robin Grote. Soy la consejera de la escuela a um, Mountain View. Laura, would you like to go next? Laura, ¿quieres seguir? And I'm Laura Holland. I'm the school counselor at Evergreen Elementary. Uh, soy Laura Holland y soy la consejera de la escuela Evergreen. And we are very fortunate tonight to have our two uh, Spanish language interpreters, translators, um, yes. Lucrecia. Y estamos afortunadas de tener a uh, dos intérpretes aquí esta noche, uh, Lucrecia, que soy yo. <laughs> She is from Evergreen. Thank you, Lucrecia. De and la escuela then, Evergreen. And then Wendy Lankalis. Y también tenemos a Wendy. And she is from Bordeaux Elementary. De la escuela Bordeaux. Buenas noches a todos. And we have a very special guest. Y tenemos a uh, una invitada especial. From the Committee for Children. De la comunidad de uh, niños. Her name is Daniela Ramirez. And Daniela, would you like to introduce yourself? Daniela Ramirez, te gustaría introducirte, por favor. Claro, Brian. Um, I, ya creo no necesitaré traducción para esta parte. Mucho gusto. Mi nombre es Daniela Ramirez. Eh, tengo un poco más de un año en, en Comedy for Children. Eh, es una organización en la que no podría estar eh, más contenta y, y afortunada para, para trabajar hacia esta misión. Eh, previamente trabajaba en Pearson, una eh, publicadora británica, y hoy pues eh, sigo en el sector educativo afortunadamente trabajando con un maravilloso programa, así que más adelante les compartiré algunos recursos eh, para todos los padres de familia. Muchas gracias por tenernos. Thank you, Daniela. Gracias, Daniela. I'm going to pull up our slide presentation. So, vamos a empezar con la presentación. So, tonight's agenda is going to focus on, of course, you've met our school counselors. Eh, nuestra agenda, vamos a enfocarnos, uh, bueno, ustedes ya han, um, ya, han, este, ya hemos presentado a, las, a los otros consejeros. We're going to focus on social emotional learning. El propósito de la noche es uh, aprendizaje de socioemocional. Which is something that we have been working on as counselors. Y esto es algo que hemos trabajado como uh, los consejeros. Uh, throughout the school year. 
durante el resto de la escuela? Each building has developed a series of activities. Eh, cada edificio ha desarrollado um, diferentes uh, series o de actividades. To help our students. Para ayudar a, a nuestros estudiantes. In managing the challenges to our remote learning. Para ayudar a nuestros estudiantes con, con los retos que ellos tienen de cómo um, estar distanciados o tener clases en línea. So our hope tonight is to give you as parents. El propósito es de darles a ustedes a, como padres. An understanding of what social emotional learning is. El entendimiento de qué es socio emocional. We want to talk about the developmental stages of trauma and stress. Y nos gustaría este darle etapa, et, vamos a hablar de etapas de desarrollo de trauma y estrés. And then uh, Daniela, towards the end of our presentation. Y al final de esta presentación, um, Daniela is going to present some websites. Ella nos va a presentar con unos sitios web that you as parents will be able to access. Y que como ustedes, como padres, ustedes van a poder uh, tener acceso. And use to watch either with your child or information for you as parents. Y puede ver estos uh, videos con sus hijos o información um, para ustedes como padres. This presentation will be recorded. Esta presentación va a ser grabada. And some of the websites will repost on our district webpage. Y, y este, algunos de estos eh, eh, van a estar este, puestos en nuestro distrito web, en el distrito web de Shelton, para que sea accesible para ustedes. So we again welcome you to tonight's presentation. Otra vez le damos uh, las bienvenidas a, a todos esta noche. And on with the show. Empezamos. We introduced ourselves as the Shelton Elementary School Counselors. Como este, ya nos introducimos hace un momento, somos los consejeros del di este distrito escolar de Shelton. You have the opportunity to reach out to us at any time. Usted nos puede hablar en cualquier momento. Either through your classroom teacher. Eh, puede ser por, uh, con los maestros de sus hijos. Or through either the um, ELL family liaisons within each of our buildings. O con cualquiera de los enlaces familiares de cada edificio. Uh, Lucrecia, would you introduce, although I know she was not here, but would you introduce the Mountain View um, family uh, liaison and let them know who she is? Uh, eh, que introduzca a la enlace familiar de la escuela a Mountain View. Ella no está aquí con nosotros, pero se llama Yvette Salamanca. So, si este, ustedes uh, tienen estudiantes que van a la escuela a Mountain View, pueden comunicarse con Yvette. Gracias, thank you. Sí. So, what we'd like to start off first. Vamos a empezar primero. Is a wonderful video. Eh, con un video maravilloso. That helps to explain what is social emotional learning. Y esto nos va a este, explicar un poco qué es socio emocional. That is an acronym, S-E-L. Um, y eso es este S L E. That is used a lot, but sometimes is misunderstood. Eh, que se usa mucho, pero a veces es uh, un mal entendi entendido. So hopefully tonight you'll have a chance. So esperamos que esta noche tenga la chance. To see what schools are doing in regards to social emotional learning. ¿Y qué están haciendo las escuelas uh, para socioemocional? En estos días, 
se habla mucho sobre ASE, el aprendizaje socioemocional. ¿Pero qué es exactamente? El aprendizaje socioemocional es el proceso de aprendizaje de habilidades sociales y emocionales y es tan importante como el aprendizaje de la lectura o matemáticas. Este proceso de aprendizaje es más eficaz cuando comienza temprano y continúa durante la secundaria. Las habilidades socioemocionales son esenciales para el éxito en la escuela, el trabajo y la vida. Con ASE, los estudiantes aprenden a monitorear sus emociones y comportamientos, tener empatía, ser amables y preocuparse por los demás, resolver problemas, tomar decisiones responsables y mantener relaciones sanas. Los estudiantes aprenden a reconocer lo que está sucediendo dentro de ellos y a ser conscientes de sus emociones, lo cual les ayuda a regular emociones fuertes y comportamientos impulsivos. Esto les ayuda a parar y respirar y pensar en la situación antes de actuar. Los estudiantes aprenden a identificar las emociones y perspectivas de los demás, lo que les ayuda a empatizar y mostrar compasión, sin importar quiénes son o de dónde vienen. No es difícil imaginar cómo esto es importante en el aula y en la vida. Los estudiantes aprenden a resolver problemas de forma pacífica y a comunicar firmemente lo que necesitan o desean. Esto les ayuda a llevarse bien con otros estudiantes y a recibir la ayuda que necesitan de los adultos. Cuando los estudiantes aprenden a tomar decisiones responsables sobre su vida y su futuro, las cosas pueden salir mejor. La investigación muestra que el aprendizaje socioemocional hace la diferencia. Los estudiantes que participan en el ASE tienen mejores resultados académicos, mejoran sus actitudes y comportamientos y tienen menos problemas de delincuencia. En Estados Unidos, los estudiantes con buena competencia socioemocional tienen doble probabilidad de obtener un título universitario y es un 50% más probable que se gradúen de la secundaria y trabajen tiempo completo a los 25 años. Igual de importante, los estudiantes con una buena competencia socioemocional tienen más amigos. Esto significa que es más probable que se sientan conectados a la escuela y les vaya bien, y menos probable que queden marginados o acosados. Así, al participar en el aprendizaje socioemocional, los estudiantes aprenden las habilidades necesarias para tener éxito en cada faceta escolar y el resto de sus vidas. Almost like you want to see it again. I really love that video. Como que queremos verlo otra vez, dice Brian, porque le encanta ese video. When we talk about social emotional learning, then. Eso vamos a seguir hablando de socio emocional. You'll know that in the video they talked about five core areas. Eh, si ustedes este, vieron el video, hablaron o mencionaron de cinco áreas. Uh, the first is self -management. El primero es de conciencia de sí mismo. And that's managing emotions and behaviors. Uh, manejar las emociones y comportamientos. To achieve one's goals. Eh, para lograr una meta. The next one is self-awareness. El, el siguiente es de conciencia social. And that is to recognize one's emotions and values. Este reconocer tus emociones y valores. As well as one's strengths and challenges. Y también los retos um, y que tienes o tus habilidades. The next is social awareness. Y el siguiente es... Um, Conciencia social. Uh, perdón, creo que el primero era autocontrol. And that's showing understanding and empathy for others. Y eso es de tener tem eh, empatía para, para los demás. Responsible decision making. Eh, el siguiente es tomar decisiones de manera responsable. Making ethical constructive choices. So, um, tomar buenas decisiones. About personal and social behavior. Eh, ya sea uh, personal o uh, comportamiento social. And then the last is relationship skills. Y lo último es habilidades um, relacionales. 
forming positive relationships. Eh, formar uh, relaciones positivas. Working in teams. Eh, trabajar en equipo. Dealing effectively with conflict. Y eh, a lidiar con uh, conflicto de positivo. So our goal as counselors y nuestras metas como consejeros is very much like a classroom teachers. Es casi igual que la clase de, como una maestra de salón. As important as the academics are. Es tan importante como la parte académica. The social emotional learning component. El componente de socioemocional. Is just as important. Es, es muy importante. In this time of remote learning. En este tiempo que estamos en a distancia o aprendizaje remoto. We recognize that your child. Reconocemos que su estudiante. Is experiencing a wide range of emotions. Está experimentando um, varios emociones. Some of those emotions are comfortable. Y algunos de esos emociones uh, son confortables. And some of those emotions are uncomfortable. Y, y otros emociones que no son tan confortables. And so the activities that we try to have in our schools. Y las actividades que tratamos de hacer en las escuelas. Help to teach those students. Ayuda a, a esos estudiantes. How to manage those comfortable and uncomfortable feelings. Eh, ¿Cómo lidiar con esos uh, sentimientos confortables o no? In an appropriate way. En una manera apropiada. So, for example. Oh, como, por ejemplo. If we're going to do some self-management, how are we going to manage some of these feelings that we might have about not seeing our friends? Si sí, cómo manejamos con esos sentimientos, por ejemplo, si no podemos uh, ver a nuestros amigos. The feelings of not seeing our teachers. Eh, los sentimientos de no poder ver a nuestros maestros. And then preparing ourselves. Y prepararnos. For that day that we will be able to come back and see our teachers and friends. Y prepararnos ese día que sí vamos a poder ver a nuestros amigos, a nuestros maestros. So again, our goal is to help them be able to make good choices. Y, y otra vez, este, nuestra meta es que los estudiantes uh, eh, tom, tomen buenas decisiones. How to work through those feelings. Y, y cómo manejar con esos sentimientos. In a safe, respectful, and responsible way. En una manera responsable y segura. Another area, the decision making. En la otra área de tomar decisiones. Is being able to know how to make good choices. Es, es, es saber cómo tomar esas buenas decisiones. Which, as we were sharing in our previous presentation. Estábamos viendo en, nuestro, en nuestra presentación previa. It's going to be rather challenging. Es, es, eh, es un reto. Because we're going to be moving into both a hybrid. Porque vamos ahora a estar moviéndonos también en la clase híbrida. And also continuing with our remote learning. Y, y también... Uh, Seguir con el aprendizaje eh, remoto. So we feel the challenges are going to be for our students. So, so estos retos son este, difíciles para, para los estudiantes. Understanding the expectations when they come back to school. So entender todas las expectaciones cuando regresemos a la escuela. And then having to switch gears and go back into those expectations in the remote learning. Y, y cuando, claro, regresen en, en la clase de línea, uh, también aprender las, uh, uh, lo, que, lo, que, lo que tienen que hacer cuando están en línea o estudiando en línea. So when we talk about then that social awareness component. So cuando, cuando estamos hablando del uh, autocontrol. 
they're going to need to understand that their feelings ellos tienen que aprender que sus sentimientos about coming back to school de regresar a la escuela may be different than their friends when they see them face to face. Es, se va a ver diferente cuando vean a sus amigos um, cara a cara. For example, some students may feel very excited about seeing their friends. Por ejemplo, unos estudiantes eh, van a estar muy est entusiasmados de ver a sus amigos. And some students may be very um, scared or apprehensive about seeing their friends again. Y otros uh, estudiantes pueden estar como rehusados o no, no querer ver a sus amigos. And one of the things I, I had forgotten to mention in the previous presentation when we talk about feelings is to let parents know that both of those feelings are okay to have. Y una de las cosas que se me olvidó comentar en nuestra presentación previa es que está bien, cualquiera de esos sentimientos está bien que los estudiantes tengan. I think the important thing to remember is that when we look at uh, social emotional learning, Lo importante cuando veamos, um, eh, socio -emocional, we're, we're not talking about necessarily a grade, no estamos hablando necesariamente de un grado, but just recognizing where they are in their, uh, their emotional state. Solamente reconocer en donde eh, están eh, con sus sentimientos. So those relationship skills y esas habilidades, um, que tienen, are things that they may have to relearn because sharing with your brother and sister for the last nine months porque este, si estás compartiendo con tus hermanos por is, is nueve meses, be, oh, I'm sorry, Lucrecia, is going to be a lot different. Es, puede, va a ser muy diferente. Uh, when you're sharing with, uh, you know, 10 or 15 of your friends on the playground. Va a ser muy diferente cuando estás comp uh, compartiendo con más de 15 amigos en, en la área de juego. So I'm going to pause for just a moment and ask Wendy, who's monitoring our chat box, if there's any questions so far. Vamos a pausar un momento para ver, eh, preguntarle a Wendy si hay preguntas. No, no hay. No hay ninguna pregunta hasta el momento. There's any question to the, to the moment. No questions at this time? No, no questions. Okay. I'm going to give the next set of slides to our Mountain View counselor, Robin Grove. So la siguiente, eh, va, la siguiente va a presentar la, la consejera Mrs. Grove de Mountain View. And she'll be talking about the developmental stages of trauma and stress. Y ella va a estar a, a hablando las etapas del desarrollo del trauma y estrés. Thank and you, Wendy, Brian. you can go ahead. Okay, so Brian was talking about how um, things are different now. Oh, Wendy, are you going to do that? Sorry, yes. I thought Wendy. She... Yes. Okay. Brian estaba hablando de cómo las cosas pueden ser diferentes. And that has been hard on a lot of our students. Y eso ha sido muy difícil en muchos de nuestros estudiantes. And kids show that things are hard. Los estudiantes muestran que las cosas son difíciles in many different ways en muchas diferentes maneras so if you have children who are ages 2 to 5 si ustedes tienen niños que están en las edades de 2 a 5 these are some of the behaviors they might have to show you that they're having a hard time estas son las, algunas de las uh, formas que te demostrarán si están teniendo problemas de comportamiento. They might feel helpless. Se, and van, have a sen uncertainty. Se van a sentir um, como que no tienen uh, mucha ayuda. 
that you will see in other parts of their life after a hard event. Lo van a ver en otras etapas de la vida cuando tienen un evento muy difícil. They might have a hard time eating, sleeping, que tengan, or even with their toileting. Pueda que tengan um, tiempo difícil con comiendo, yendo al baño, o durmiendo. They might talk about the event. Pueda que hablen repentinamente del evento. Or pretend to play it out. O pretendiendo o actuando el evento. And they might really be clingy to you, like hold on to you a lot more than normal. O tal vez van a tener excesivo apego a los que los cuidan o, lo, o problemas para separarse. And that's what I was going to say too. They might have a hard time being away from you too. Pueda que tengan muchos problemas al alejarse de ustedes. There are some things that you can do to help them with that though. Hay cosas que pueden hacer para poderles ayudar. Hold them, hug them, cuddle them. Sostenerlos, abrazarlos y acurrucarlos. Just as much as possible to help them feel safe. Lo más posible para ayudarlos a sus hijos a que se sientan sano. Children who are just learning to talk. Con niños que están aprendiendo a hablar. It would be good to use very few words when you talk to them. Sería bueno que utilicen frases simples cuando hablen con ellos. For example, say, mama is here. Por ejemplo, mama está aquí. Another thing that you can do to help kids. Otra forma que pueden hacer para ayudarles a los niños. Is to keep routines the same as much as possible. Es mantener las rutinas lo más posible que puedan. Try to have bedtime be at the same time and meal times be at the same time as much as you can. Traten de regularles las horas de comer y de dormir lo más que puedan. If they have a hard time with the toileting or with their behavior, just be very patient with them. Si tienen muchos problemas al tolerar la regresión de Ir al baño. And then at bedtime, if it's hard for them to be away from you. Y en la hora de dormir, si es difícil estar muy uh, separado de ustedes. You can spend a few more minutes with them at bedtime, listening and talking with them. Puede pasar más tiempo con los niños. Dándoles tiempo para dormir. Another idea is kids at this age like to draw pictures. Otras ideas a esta etapa. A los niños les gusta uh, dibujar. And they can draw pictures to express their feelings. Permítele uh, que se expresen. Los sentimientos a través de dibujar y dibujos. And those are some ideas for our younger kids. Now y esas we'll move son on to algunas, the Y esas son algunas para ideas para nuestros niños pequeños. Now we will talk about children ages 6 to 11. Ahora vamos a hablar de niños de edades de 6 a 11 años. What you might see in kids this age. Lo que pueden ver en esta etapa de, de las edades de 6 a 11. Is they may worry a lot about their safety 
and the safety of their family. Pueda que se preocupen mucho de la seguridad de ellos y la seguridad de sus familiares. Or friends at school. O los amigos en la escuela. They might retell what's going on many times. Pueda que recuenten constantemente un evento traumático o qué le está pasando. And for kids that are about nine years old to 11 years old. Y para niños que tienen de 9 a 11. They might not want to talk about the event at all. Ellos se rehusarán a hablar del evento. They might feel overwhelmed with fear or se sadness. Sentirán, se sentirán con mucho en su pecho. They might also have a hard time sleeping and might not feel as hungry. También van a tener problemas para dormir y no se van a sentir con mucha hambre. And they also might complain about physical discomfort. Tal vez se van a, um, a quejar de incomodidades físicas como los dolores de estómago. Like stomach aches, headaches, or feeling tired. Dolores de estómago, dolores de cabeza, y sentirse cansado. Some things you can do to help your kids this age. Algunas cosas que puede hacer para ayudarle a estos niños en esta etapa. Is to tell your kids that their feelings are normal. Es decirles a sus hijos que los sentimientos son normales. And tell them they are safe and y listen to them. Que están a salvo. Just like the younger kids. Así como los niños pequeños también. Keeping routines of same bedtime and same meal times can really help. Mantener rutinas lo más posible con comidas y horas de dormir regular, regularmente. Try also not to let them watch a whole lot of the news or watch your videos about it on um, your social media. Limitar la exposición a los medios acerca del evento. Si ve en un reporte, siéntese con ellos para poder hablar de esto después. If they do see something on TV or on social media. Si ellos miran um, algo en la televisión o en, la, en los um, medios de comunicación. Sit with them and then talk with them about it afterwards. Siéntense con ellos y hablen de, con respecto a lo que vieron después. Another great idea for kids this age. Otras buenas ideas para los niños de esta edad. Is to encourage them to help out other people. Es aconsejarles que ayuden a otros niños o otras personas. This can give them a sense of purpose. Esto les when puede dar. Esto les puede dar una sensación de haber completado algo. Y tener propósito. Okay. Any questions about any of these ideas we've shared? Hay algunas preguntas con respecto a estas ideas que hemos compartido. Robin, I don't see anyone. Oh, yeah. okay. Robin and Laurie know in our last presentation, one of the things we wanted to emphasize Oh, Wendy, um, one of the things we want to let parents know Una de las cosas queremos hacerles saber a los padres that it's important that as we talk about the developmental stages, es importante cuando hablamos del desarrollo de los niños, when might I need to be concerned about certain behaviors? ¿Cuándo debería de estar preocupado de algunos comportamientos de ellos? In my child's demeanor. En el, el, en el desarrollo de mi hijo. That might need some further assistance. 
pueda que necesiten um, asistencia eh, más eh, either adelantada. Through, either through our school counselor. Ya sea por medio del consejero de la escuela. A mental health counselor or therapist. El consejero mental. O or los, our family pediatrician. O los uh, pediatras de las familias. So maybe Robin and Laura, you could just um, highlight a couple of things that might tal, necessitate that. Tal vez Robin and, and Laura, si pueden enfocarse más en, en, con respecto a estos temas. So I might say that if Entonces you see yo podría decir something that's concerning you or you're algo worried que le, about with your child. Algo que les pueda preocupar. And it goes about as long as two weeks or more. Y puede que llegue um, más de dos uh, semanas o más. That that would be a good time. Ese sería un buen tiempo. To reach out to your school counselor or your pediatrician. Llamar o buscar ayuda con el consejero de la escuela o con tu doctor personal de los niños. Yeah, and I think that during the last. Sí, y yo uh, creo que en la última. Um, presentation we just did, we talked about too being alert for when your child might say something that. En la última presentación que vimos. Um, maybe something about hurting themselves or somebody else or something else that really throws up a red flag. If you could please uh, pause because it was too long to translate. Okay. Can you repeat, please? So if your child says something scary. Si tu niño dice algo temeroso. Maybe about hurting themselves or somebody else. Tal vez um, lastimarse ellos o lastimar a alguien más. That is a red flag for you. Eso es algo para preocuparte. And you should pay attention to that. Y deberíamos de poner atención a eso. And contact your child's pediatrician um, or even one of us to see if your child Contacta could... a tu pediatra o a uno de los consejeros de la escuela. Or one of the counselors um, in the community, one of the mental health counselors. O algún consejero eh, mental de la comunidad. Thank you, Robin and Laura. Gracias, Robin and Laura. Okay, I am not going to spend too much time on this because I know we have Daniela that we want to make sure that she has time to share what she's got. Bueno, no voy a tener tanto tiempo para explicar esta um, diapositiva, ya que sabemos que tenemos a, a la siguiente es, expositora, Daniela, que va a tomar más tiempo y va a ser en español. But these are some ideas. Estas son algunas ideas. To help your children. Para ayudar a tus niños. Adapt to wearing a mask. Adaptarse a usar un tapaboca. Because when they come back to school. Porque cuando ellos regresen a la escuela. They will be wearing their masks. Van a tener que usar las, las máscaras. O tapo bocas. Longer than they may be used to right now. Eh, por horas más largas, más de lo que están acostumbrados a hacerlo ahorita. So this picture here. En esta foto aquí. Has some ideas. Tenemos algunas ideas. To help kids. Ayudar a tus niños. Get used to wearing them longer. Para que se acostumbren a usarlas lo más tiempo posible. So you can explain why it's important to wear a mask. Puedes explicarles por qué es importante usar las tapabocas o cubrebocas. You can practice with your child wearing a mask. Puedes practicar con tu hijo a usar las máscaras. 
You can take a picture of them wearing their mask. Pueden tomar fotos con ellos usando la cubreboca. They can do pretending games with their mask. Pueden pretender a jugar juegos usando el cubreboca. Like dressing up. Como cambiándose y usar diferentes eh, ropas. They could decorate their mask using crayons or markers. Pueden decorar la, las máscaras usando colores y marcadores. If they haven't worn a mask very much. Si no han usado una uh, cubreboca muy seguido. You could start with another piece of clothing. Pueden empezar con otro pedazo de ropa o de trapo. Like a scarf, for example. Como una bufanda, por, un, por ejemplo. And this one is my favorite. Y esta es mi favorita. If they have a favorite stuffed animal or doll. Si tienen algún um, animal de eh, muñecos o alguna muñeca favorita. They could have that stuffed animal wear the mask while tener, they wear their mask. Pueden tener esa muñeca y que pueda usar una máscara. And so those are just some ideas to Esas get son, used son to algunas wearing ideas. that. Para to poder ayudar a los niños masks. a usar una máscara. Yeah. Okay. And Robin, Anything I know you have a this? website. Yes. Down here that parents can link to that we'll also post. Y tenemos aquí el sitio de web donde pueden los padres eh, ver esta información. Thank you, Robin. Gracias, Robin. At this time, we'd like to introduce Daniela Ramirez. A este momento, les, nos gustaría introducir a Daniela Ramirez. From the Committee for Children. De la Comunidad para Niños. And she's going to share some web links. Y ella va a compartir con ustedes unos sitios de web. That you as parents can access with your child. Que ustedes pueden tener acceso con sus hijos. So I'm going to give Daniela Entonces voy a darle a Daniela the next speaking spot. El espacio para que pueda hablar. So Daniela, do you want me to um, put up the slide with the sites or do you want to share Daniela, from the computer? Daniela, ¿te gustaría que yo pusiera los, uh, las vías positivas o tú quieres hacerlo? I can share from my computer. Well, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing Daniela. Yo podría compartirlas desde mi computadora. Wendy, <clears throat> Daniela is going to translate from here. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Wendy. De nada. Okay. Here we go. Oh, give me just one moment because I must share with audio. Otherwise, uh, there we go. All right, so um, I know we have about 15 minutes left, so I'll be mindful of our time. Thanks again for having us. I've, uh, perdón, ya me introducí, cambio español. <laughs> eh, y eh, pues estos son algunos de los recursos que en Comedy for Children eh, hemos trabajado. Eh, vamos a empezar un poco, yo sé que ha sido mucha información, entonces me encantaría poder mostrarles lo que es Mindyeri que son sesiones de meditación y mindfulness. Esa es la traducción en español. Eh, voy, a, voy a entrar al canal de YouTube. Eh, la página es mindyeri.com. Y una vez que vamos a la página de YouTube, vamos a poder ver algunos de los videos para poder reconectar. Son sesiones de cinco minutos para niños y adultos. Así que déjenme encontrar una sesión cortita para volver a reconectar. Está de un minuto. Aquí va. Getting into your Yeti body can help you feel more focused and ready for your day. Like anything else, though, it might take a little practice. Want to learn how to get into your Yeti body? Hmm. First, make sure you're sitting comfortably, either in a chair or on the floor. When you're in your Yeti body, 
You want your body to feel relaxed, but also awake. A good way to do this is to imagine there's a string at the top of your head. The string is pulling upward very gently so that your back is straight but still comfortable. Let your feet rest on the floor and your hands rest in your lap or on your legs. You can close your eyes or look down at your lap. Feeling relaxed and awake, Yeti? Hmm. That's it. That's your Yeti body. Ok, pues las sesiones desafortunadamente aún están en inglés. La traducción en español es un proyecto que, que la organización tiene eh, <coughs> por venir, en el cual de hecho yo estoy incluida. Pero prácticamente lo que explican aquí en un minuto es qué postura debemos tener para no solo eh, entender la información que estamos percibiendo, pero también para los alumnos dentro del aula, dentro del salón de clases, cuál es la posición adecuada para ser receptivos a la información que recibimos. ¿no? Entonces es muy visual, eh, Yeti Body, el, el, uh, la caricatura que aparece aquí lo, lo demuestra de una forma muy fácil. Eh, entonces, regreso a la página, pueden descargar las sesiones eh, para sus hijos en Spotify eh, o iTunes, si no quieren ver el video y solo lo quieren tener como un podcast, eh, pero también están en Vimeo, entonces de cualquiera de estos eh, links pueden descargar las sesiones, son miles de videos y todos son completamente gratuitos. Entonces, eso es Mineri. Eh, la, es importante mencionar que eh, tenemos el área de investigación de Mainieri, cuando me voy a la, a la parte del blog, eh, habla un poco sobre la investigación que hay detrás de, eh, de, lo, que, de lo que representa el mindfulness, ¿no? entonces estos son nada más eh, datos curiosos para, para tener en mente. Muy bien, ahora voy a pasar al blog de Comedy for Children. Aquí es importante eh, para los recursos para los padres de familia irnos al área que dice Parenting. Eh, aquí en Parenting vamos a encontrar todo, algunos de ellos los voy a mostrar en los siguientes minutos, pero todo lo que está relacionado con apoyo eh, extracurricular y familiar. Eh, tanto para eh, secundaria como primaria y, y kinder. Eh, a, 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 conforme van yendo eh, hacia abajo en la página, van a encontrar muchos artículos que una vez más son completamente gratuitos. Eh, y hoy estamos justamente llevando a cabo, regresé aquí a la página original del blog, las sesiones de, de Winter Wellbeing, que son de... de salud mental durante el invierno, que nuestra, nuestro equipo de investigación, la doctora Mylene Duong, eh, que tiene un PhD en investigación, eh, los realizó. Me parece que son cerca de cinco, cinco semanas. Así que me voy a ir a, a YouTube para que puedan tener una idea de qué tratan estas sesiones. Están en inglés también. Esto fue algo que solamente iba a durar durante el invierno, eh, pero prácticamente... Les, platico, les traduzco un poco, la, la semana uno trata de eh, cómo ser empáticos y cómo tener eh, compasión por uno mismo. Eh, la segunda semana habla de cómo manejar el estrés durante, durante estas vacaciones, eh, que seguramente algunos padres de familia tuvieron que manejarlo. Eh, Cómo, cómo estar presente con nuestra familia, eh, en mi caso fue algo que aprendí mucho y seguramente eh, en casa igual lo están practicando. Eh, en fin, eh, cada semana está en nuestro canal de YouTube de Comedy for Children, son sesiones muy cortas de aproximadamente tres minutos eh, en promedio, eh, están ahí para que para que las escuchen sus, sus, sus hijos. Eh, yo sé que a veces tienen que ser un poquito cuidadosos con el tiempo que pasan en, en, en las redes sociales, pero bueno, este canal de YouTube puede ayudar a cómo saber manejar eh, algunas de las circunstancias en, en, en los eventos que estamos viviendo. Ok. Voy a pasar a Imagine Neighborhood. 
Eh, Imagine Neighborhood es un podcast, igual se puede, es prácticamente imagina tu vecindario, esa es la traducción literal, eh, y son historias ficticias, imaginando el, el, vecind el vecindario ficticio eh, en las que nuestro equipo de innovación, pues la verdad es que durante este año eh, tuve la fortuna de conocer a algunos de ellos, pero el equipo de, de innovación creó todas estas historias ficticias con montones de creatividad y, y lanzaron este podcast. Eh, igual están disponibles en Apple Podcasts y en, y en Spotify. Eh, voy a poner uno rápidamente. Eh, la idea es que los chavos, que sus alumnos lo puedan eh, escuchar en inglés. Eh, entonces simplemente me voy a escuchar ahora. Dicen now. Y <coughs> vamos a poner, por ejemplo... Mm, Friendsgiving, entonces al momento de dar clic aquí me lleva exactamente a la página del podcast y no voy a, est estas sesiones son más largas pero pondré solo los primeros segundos para que se den una idea de más o menos que, de qué trata Hi there, my name is Scotty Iseri and welcome to the Imagine Neighborhood This week on the show, we are celebrating Friendsgiving. Friendsgiving is a holiday about being together and sharing food. And of course, that evil billionaire hamster Tantrumus Maximus shows up to ruin it. We're going to talk about how to be together when we can't actually be together and meet a special magical new friend, a Friendsgiving Yeti. Stick around for sneaky schemes, flaming pies, and a musical number from Tantrumus Maximus? All on today's Imagine Neighborhood. Prácticamente, Scotty, quien es nuestro, nuestro autor de Imagine Neighborhood, narra una sesión ficticia de lo que es el Thanksgiving en el vecindario imaginativo, eh, imaginario, y, y pues tenemos personajes en donde, dada, dada la, la, la realidad en la que nos encontramos durante la pandemia, simplemente trata de hacer esto un poquito más ligero eh, para los niños y, y complementa con personajes ficticios, en este caso es el master con un nombre loco que va a entrar a, a, a orinar la cena de Thanksgiving mientras hay pies en fuego y toda una función. Entonces el propósito de esto es reconectar con, tu, con sus hijos eh, el poder aligerar un poco la situación y sobre todo y lo más importante seguir practicando los, eh, las habilidades del aprendizaje socioemocional, ¿no? Así. Nos queda todavía un poco de tiempo, me quedan dos recursos más por compartir y prometo los, los dejamos para descansar. Eh, Captain Compassion, eh, el capitán compasión, creo que este es uno de mis favoritos. Eh, durante mi experiencia, cuando fui estudiante, Creo que fui un testimonio vivo de lo que puede implicar el bullying, eh, no solo en el desarrollo académico de los estudiantes, pero en su vida. Eh, las estadísticas lo dicen, ¿no? Uno de los, de los casos más altos de suicidio eh, en el país eh, eh, en estudiantes es, es por bullying. Uno de cada cinco estudiantes sufre bullying. Entonces es algo realmente importante eh, que atacar, o sea, que atacar, que, que resolver. Eh, Captain Compassion nace como una serie cómica de nuestro programa, que es la unidad de, de, de prevención del bullying eh, dentro de Second Step, dentro de nuestro programa. Y la idea es que se enseñe durante las lecciones del aprendizaje socioemocional. Eh, esta unidad va en conjunto con el aprendizaje socioemocional y en realidad son cinco lecciones en... Eh, en el año que intentamos se tomen en el mes de octubre porque es el mes del, de, de la prevención de bullying y pues bueno Captain Compassion eh, trata de eh, demostrar cu cuáles son los eh, las habilidades en las que podemos prevenir el bullying cómo podemos actuar como el término es bystander pero quiere decir que si tú eres testigo de bullying eh, de qué manera puedes evitarlo, ¿no? Entonces, aquí, aquí enseña cuáles son los poderes de, 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 de ser ese, eh, ese testigo y esta es la serie cómica 
y uh, mover un poquito más abajo, prácticamente esto es lo que debemos hacer, reportar el bullying, eh, como intentar ayudar en el momento y incluir a todo el mundo y ser sobre todo muy respetuoso y, y gentil a, a la hora de, de, de tratar de comunicar algo, ¿no? Eh, estos son pósters, una vez más, todo esto es gratuito, el, el sitio es eh, captaincompassion.org, capitancompassion.org, y estos pósters están, están eh, libres de descargarse para tratar de recordar cuáles son los pasos a seguir, y podrán tomar en su propio tiempo un, un, un rato para ver los videos de qué hacer si tu hijo sufre bullying, eh, o pues si tu hijo es alguien que tiende a, 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 a bullear a los demás y, y si son testigos del bullying, ¿no? Eh, y por último, eh, algo muy importante aquí es el social media toolkit, ¿no? Este, ¿cuál es, ¿Cuáles son tus, tus herramientas en, para prevenir el bullying en las redes sociales? Entonces, al momento de, pon de poner descargar, eh, tenemos aquí un poquito de, pues, un contexto de lo que puedes poner en las redes sociales para actuar en, defens en defensor del bullying y ser un ciudadano activo al respecto. Eh, un poquito de, de eh, fun facts, de datos, eh, de datos duros y prácticamente lo dejamos todo muy fácil y simple para que se pueda compartir en redes, ¿no? Eh, ok, cuatro minutos. Termino con este maravilloso recurso que es Parenting Connect. Eh, creo que no es fácil, Mi, mis papás mucho tiempo me lo, me lo mencionaron, no hay una guía, ustedes como padres de familia lo sabrán mejor, no hay una guía que te, que te enseñe el paso a paso a cómo ser papás, ¿correcto? No hay una escuela como tal. Eh, entonces, la, el, el objetivo de Parenting Connect es conectar con los adolescentes y los papás en los diferentes temas, ¿no? Como es... Ah, de hecho, esta página, al momento de picar español, es lo que va a pasar con el resto de nuestras páginas eventualmente. Esto se, automáticamente se traduce a, a, al español cada uno de los temas. ¿no? Entonces, las, los, top, los temas que toca esta, este recurso es el tiempo en pantalla con tus adolescentes, temas de independencia, eh, las controversias que puede haber en cuanto a la responsabilidad que tienen tus hijos en casa, como temas de comunicación entre papás e hijos y, y otros recursos. Voy, creo que tenemos tiempo para rápidamente eh, mostrarles este video. Creo que sería excelente que por ahí en casa, si tienen algunos hijos adolescentes, eh, tuvieran oportunidad de verlo. Eh, entonces, aquí va. As a teenager, I like a lot more privacy than I used to have. Like, I like people to knock on my door. There are no locked doors in this house. We have to be able to turn that knob and open the door at any time. One of the biggest questions parents have is how much independence should I allow my teenager? You want to give independence based on the amount that your child can handle it. And he's looking at me and this is common phrases. Settle down, calm down. Why are you making such a big deal out of it? I sat there, I'm like, no mom, like you don't know anything. The challenge for parents is to control their own emotions. Nothing works well when you're hangry, you know, hungry and, and angry. You know, now they say um, that I'm a teen, uh, I have to be a lot more mature, I have to, um, I have a lot more responsibility. Responsibility to self-control, responsibility in academics, responsible to learn how to control your emotions. Que voy a parar ahí nada más para tener el tiempo en, en cuenta, eh, pero yo creo que todos nos relacionamos con, con este tema, ¿no? Definitivamente no hay una guía, repito, pero estamos aquí para apoyarlos. Por favor, hagan uso de estos recursos. Eh, van a compartirles una presentación con todos ellos y estamos aquí para cualquier pregunta que puedan tener, creo que apenas hay tiempo para preguntas y respuestas muchas gracias Daniela, thank you so much I know we were pressed there for time and so I really appreciate you taking the 
the time to go through each one of those websites. Uh, parents, again, we will uh, have those um, web links posted on our district website. Daniela, muchas gracias. Aunque estamos cortos de tiempos, vamos a tomar el enlace del sitio web y los vamos a poner en, en nuestro sitio web del Distrito Escolar de Shelton. Laura, is there any questions before we wrap things up? ¿Hay preguntas, Laura? There are a few comments. Okay. Solo comentarios. Um, we have one warm fuzzy from Principal Targus. It says, nice yes. job, counselors. And eh, tenemos un comentario de la directora uh, Targus. Dice, muy bien hecho, consejeros. I just want to connect that back to our, our SEL skills of um, relationship skills in our chart. Thank you. Principal Targus. Y, y de las habilidades uh, relacionadas, relacionadas uh, de habilidades. Gracias a la directora Targus. And it looks like a community member wanted the English version of this presentation. So I just want to remind you that happened at six o'clock. So you'll be able to view the recording. Y un miembro de la comunidad quería esta sesión en inglés. Uh, así es que eso pasó previamente, pero tenemos eh, grabado esa sesión. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. I just want to add that we will definitely invite Daniela and Kelly back. Uh, I think your uh, presentation was excellent and we'd love to give you much more time to go through some of the other uh, web links that are available through the Committee for Children. So thank you again, Daniela. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Laura, Lucrecia, Wendy, and of course our tech specialist, Aaron Miller. Um, have a safe evening, everyone, and thank you again for coming. Eh, que gracias a todos los padres que se conectaron esta noche con nosotros. Definitivamente vamos a invitar a Daniela y a Kelly que regresen y darle más tiempo para su presentación. A todos, gracias a los consejeros, Robin, Laura, a Wendy, al técnico Aarón por estar con nosotros y buenas noches. Adiós. Yeah.